and welcome once again to the Mission TV Show. I'm Melissa Summers, and extreme faith calls for extreme missions, and extreme missions is calling for an army of youth. This young lady I'm about to introduce you to has stepped out on extreme faith and is doing extraordinary things through Christ. Her name is Sarah Ross, and Sarah, welcome. Thank you. So what are some of the things you're doing? How did you get started, first of all? Well, I think it started from when, before I was born even, God was preparing a family for me to be born into, and he was preparing a way of, of living for me to be raised in. And being a missionary in a foreign land started when I was 19. I, I was in college, I, was becoming, I was, wanted to become a nurse, I always wanted to become a nurse. And um, I was going to school for prerequisites for nursing, and then I had a break between, between prerequisites and, and the actual course for six months. And I had a friend named Melissa Harding, and she had gone to Bolivia and started an orphanage. And I said, as soon as I'm done school, I want to come join you. Okay. Now, where are you attending school? I was attending at a, a public college okay. in, in northern BC in Canada. Okay. Yeah. So I decided I would go down there and help her out for six months. And So now this was going to be a temporary thing yeah. while you were... While I was waiting for the, the nursing course to start. Okay. Okay. So I went down there for six months. So that was when I was there. Yes. Oh, yes. Let, me tell you, let, let me tell you guys, I saw this just cute little scared, well she wasn't little, but I mean she just had this big bright smile. You were just like, okay, what's going to happen next? It, it, <laughs> how did you feel? What was it like for you? It was, I was so excited to be there that I wasn't as scared as I probably should have been, uh -huh, uh -huh. but I didn't know the, the language, I didn't know the culture, I didn't even know if if Melissa was going to be at the airport to get me. It was, it was big and scary, but at the same time, I was so excited to be there. It was, you did some it. adventurous things too, <laughs> didn't you? I mean, I, I can't remember all, but you branched out. I don't know if you went by yourself to another part of Bolivia, or you did some... Yeah, I did some things I probably shouldn't have done. But <laughs> <laughs> Extreme faith, that's our yeah. youth. Or so. even things that I didn't even realize were dangerous until after. I had done them and then I came back and like, like people what? were like, what did you do that for? And, and I was just like... Okay, give us some examples. What did you do? <laughs> okay. Well, I went, I was swimming down the Benny River, which is part of the Amazon River. And I just decided... Swimming to, down the Amazon. Yeah. It was, it was raining and, and the river was getting quite high. And it was, it was pretty dangerous to be swimming in it. But I was just going down to the to the nearest town. We had gone up in boat. So and you just jump in and go swimming down to the next town on the Amazon. Yeah. Oh. And it was fun. We went four, four kilometers in about an hour and a half. And um, I got out. And kilometers and, and miles is what? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm bad with math. Okay. <laughs> it's two points. Yeah, anyway. Okay, okay. So about almost two miles maybe. Did you tell your mom? <laughs> no, I never told her. But anyway, now, I got out in the town. Now mother knows. <laughs> <laughs> I got out in the town, and some people asked me where I'd been because I was all wet, and I was like, oh, I was just swimming in the river. I had gotten out at part of the river because there were some rocks, and I thought maybe I shouldn't go there because I might be getting hit against the rocks. So I got out and walked for a ways and then got back in. And then <laughs> once I got to the town, everyone's like, you were in the river? I was like, yeah. Now these are the townspeople. Yeah, the okay. town people. And they're like, don't you know there's piranhas and anacondas and whirlpools in there? Piranhas? Piranhas, piranha, piranhas. And <gasps> yeah, <laughs> and I was just like, what? And they're like, right, right back there by the rocks, there's whirlpools that suck people down and people have drowned there. And I was just like, and we just decided to get out and, and walk for that place. So, so just stupid things that I did that, <laughs> that God, God looked after me because I didn't, I didn't really know any better. Since in our ignorance, he what? He, he takes care of something. Winks, he winks. <laughs> yeah. Then other, another time I went, I went traveling by myself and in the rainy season over there, you never know when you're going to get through. So a 24 hour trip turned into a 52 hour trip and I was in the bus and it got stuck and I was by myself. There was two guys behind me that got drunk on the bus and, and I was just like, I shouldn't be traveling by myself. Now we're stuck in the middle of nowhere. These guys are drunk. So I got off the bus and I thought I'd start walking because I knew that they'd be oh. stuck there for a long time. This is the bus where everybody was on. Yeah. You're going to get off and go walk because the bus is... Because you catch different right. modes of transportation, like big trucks and things on the way. So 
And you're there with no one else with you? No. Okay. I was going to another school to see my sister. Sarah, and um, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So I got off, and finally I found a big truck that was going, that was going to keep going because they got through the big big mud hole. And so I was like, can I go with you? And, and he's like, okay. So I hopped on the back, oh. and there's big garbage cans in the back and Brazil nuts. And to my surprise, two other people were on the back of the truck, and they were the two drunk guys. Oh. And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> So I spent the, the night in the back of a big truck with two drunk guys, and, oh. and it, it was crazy. But, but God brought me through. Amen. Even. Does mom know about that one? She knows about that okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. So now we're in Bolivia with Melissa, and you running and swimming down the Amazon. What else? <laughs> um, you want more stories of that? Or? No, you can go okay. ahead. Okay, okay. Um, I was working at Familia Feliz, which is the orphanage slash boarding school. Okay where um, the first year when I first got there, Melissa sent me ahead to her house. Um, she had to stay in Santa Cruz and do some, some business. So I, I went ahead in one of the little planes for the first time. And I got there and she wanted me to look after her, four, her five little boys. Okay, f five little boys? Yeah. By yourself? By myself, and I didn't know Spanish. how old are you at this point? 19. 19, 20, 20. This is about three years ago. Yeah. Okay, tell me about that one. <laughs> I didn't know any Spanish. Um, I was stuck in this house. It's just a, a hut with just a, a thatch roof and board floor and half board walls. And, and I, they tucked me in the first night. I didn't know how to tuck in a, mosqui a mosquito net. Okay. So they tucked me in. The children. Yeah, the, the little boys tucked me in. But I, I soon learned that these little boys weren't refined. Let's just say refined. Okay. <laughs> they were very rambunctious and dirty and Did I didn't they speak English? No, they didn't speak okay, English. Okay, so you're there not speaking Spanish. The children don't speak English. Oh, this is getting good. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh man, I, I've soon learned that, that only God can give you patience <laughs> and that you need a lot of it. <laughs> okay, tell me more. <laughs> so, How I was, did you learn this? Give me an example. Patience? Yes, with oh, the man. children. I would, okay, so here's five little boys in the house, and they, they make a disaster everywhere they go, and they don't know to clean up behind themselves. So I'm in the house, and I'm trying to get lunch on. I'm trying to, to get the house tidied up, because even though it's just a board house, you need to have it clean and tidy, because right. that just drives me crazy if it's not. So I, was, I cleaned up the house as best I could. They would run through, track mud through the house, and that's okay, because it's just board floor, right? But so <laughs> I was trying to get them to help me, not knowing their language and, and trying to, to tell them, you know, you stay outside. If your feet are dirty, wash them off before you come in, et cetera. And they didn't listen. They were just, they That's, didn't know how to listen because they didn't know what I was saying. I'm sure they figured it out, but they just yeah. played like they didn't listen. So, <laughs> and, then, and then once I started learning Spanish, they would, they would start laughing at me. Anything I said that I said wrong, Oh, oh man, okay. I so got it all the that's, time. That's character building. That's <laughs> but I, I soon got used to that. And then, and then it was started where God put me in, in situations where I was in charge of kids mm -hmm. and in charge of the kitchen and in charge of the garden. This is tool. at Family fam yeah. uh, Familia Feliz. Okay, so has, has um, Melissa come back with the job? Are you still you know, keeping the children or? She, she came back after a week and saved oh, me from. Oh, so this is only for a week. Yeah. Okay. For okay. the first week. Though. Okay. So now you're playing, I mean, well, you're mother to more children yeah. there. Okay. So yeah. what happened? Um, where was I? <laughs> you were saying, okay, you know, you started with teaching them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was put under more and more responsibility and and as, as I got accustomed to the language and the culture and the dirtiness and the kids, um, I started getting more and more jobs. And, and God just kept teaching me more and more patience and more responsibility and, and more faith as I, mm. as I went on. And Tell me what was your biggest faith lesson that you had to learn while you were over there in Bolivia? I don't think I have any specific faith lesson, mm -hmm. but I don't have a job, I don't have a career, and I don't have somebody who supports me all the time. Mm -hmm. So 
I left college with about five thousand okay. dollars, and I've been running off that five thousand dollars for the last three years. <laughs> and I know I've spent way more than five thousand dollars on plane tickets to and back and to and back from Bolivia and then here to the states, and and for dentistry and for food and for you know everything that I need. Well, it's like the oil cruise; it never runs out. It never runs out. Wow. And and I have. I have way more than what I need. Way more than what you need. I, I have a computer. I never even thought I, I would need a computer. But God knew when I, I would need a computer and he gave me one, just like that. I came, I came to the States, to Wildwood, on the bus. So and you're now, you, you were a student at Wildwood? Yes. Okay, uh, so take me from, okay, you're here at, you know, in Bolivia, you learn these lessons. Do you go to Wildwood right after this or? this? I went to, to Bolivia for the first year, and then I went home for a while, for a month, and then I went back to Bolivia. And then during that second year in Bolivia, I was praying, and I said, God, you know, I want to go back and become a nurse. So the nurse, was, that was still heavy on your heart? Yes. Okay. While I was down there, people would come and, and ask for help, and, and lots of the times I could help them just by cleaning out their wounds or giving them a band-aid or just sympathy and love, but, but there's some things that you can't. You can't just give them a band-aid for. Right. So um, I just was praying about it. I said, God, I, I really want to become a nurse still. And so I, I applied at, at different places. I applied at Wildwood, at Weimar, um, at a school in Norway called Matson. Um, also, I wanted to go to the high school in Bolivia. And I applied also at Southern Adventist University. And so you would have gone to school in Bolivia? I would have been, gone or, and helped out at a high school. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I had all these places, and I was thinking, you know what, I, I would really like to go to Southern because I've heard it's a good, good Adventist university, and I, I know it's expensive, but I figured that since I didn't have money to pay for a cheap school, I didn't have money to pay for an expensive school, God could do, do either one just as easy. Mm -hmm. So I prayed, and I said, God, if you want me to go to Southern, you have to show me how you're going to pay for it, and you have to get me accepted. And so for all these different schools, I, I applied and I just prayed about it. And towards the end of the year, um, time was coming to go to, to Southern. I was accepted into the school, into the nursing program. Mm -hmm. And I just kept praying and, and he never showed me how he was going to pay for it. <laughs> so I took that as a no okay. <laughs> or a wait. I don't know what it is. Right. But, and then I had all these other options and I, and I was like, God, I... I want to do what you want me to do. Amen. And so you were totally surrendered to whatever the Lord wanted. There's nothing, nothing better to do but what he wants you to do. Amen. So, yeah. So I, I was praying about it, and I, finally I was, I was needing answers. So I said, God, I'm going to give you a week. Oh. <laughs> it was Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is only the God of the universe. You've got a week. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> only youth, only extreme. But, you know, he... He wants us to do what he wants, wants us to do. And he and, says, try me. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and I, like, I wasn't asking out of being a spoiled child. I was asking because. In earnest. Yeah. So I said, next Wednesday, you need to send somebody to internet from the place where you want me to go. And they have to write me and say, I'm accepted to where you want me to go. But I said, you know, if you could tell me beforehand, it would be better. <laughs> then I won't feel like I'm bossing you around. <laughs> so um, Tuesday night of the next week, I got a phone call out there in the jungle, and it was somebody from Wildwood, and they, had, they, <gasps> they said, Sarah Lynn Ross, and I was like, yeah. And they said, you, did you know you're accepted to Wildwood? And for a minute, I forgot what was Wildwood. <gasps> and I was like, wow. like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. And this is where? Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. Thank you. <laughs> and then So they tracked you down. They tracked me down. I had You're, I had applied earlier on in the year on the internet, but I hadn't finished my application cuz the truck to the orphanage was going back to the orphanage. And so So you did this on the internet in yeah, Bolivia. In Bolivia. Okay. So I just hit send and I said, "You know, I'll come back next week and finish it off because I didn't have time that week." And then during the week I forgot about it and I just kept going. And throughout the year people kept saying, "You know, you should go to Wildwood." And I was like, "Oh, maybe." But I, I kept putting it off and, and forgetting about it. And the Lord did. He answered your prayer. He was like, he, okay, Lord, if you let me know ahead of time. But you were brushing it off. 
And um, the lady who phoned me, she couldn't find any of my information until that day. And she found my, she found my contact information that day and phoned me that night. Wow. Next day when I went to town, she was the only one who wrote me. So I knew without a doubt that's, that's where God wanted me to go. So for the last year, I've been in Wildwood. Um, I spent six months working, work scholarship, to pay for my studies. And then the last six months, I've been studying. We're almost done. In three days, we're going to be done the course. And Wow, from Wildwood. It's a college of health evangelism. Mm -hmm. And we've been learning different things about hydrotherapy, about massage therapy, about um, herbs and natural remedies and Bible, Daniel, Revelation. Um, really? God's healing program, yeah. A lot so of now, as, as you're learning these things, what's going through your mind as far as nursing and, and the experiences you had in Bolivia and, and implementing all that you're learning? What's going through your mind? I'm excited because before I didn't know very much about the Bible and I didn't know much about, about how to help people. Mm. I knew about water and charcoal and stuff, but... But now I have so many more tools to, to help people more. And I, I know more about lifestyle, so I can help not just change, not just fix the always, but to fix them from the inside out. And, and I have more spiritual, more spiritual aspect on, on it now, so I can, I can help bring Jesus into it. And I'm excited to, to start practicing it. I plan to go back to Bolivia. They want me to come back to the orphanage and and help restructure the education program at the school. And I, I really want to implement this stuff into it. So you're just excited. I'm excited. Now, I know you brought us some pictures. So you want, yeah. you want to share some sure. this? Sure. This is a picture of... Let me guess. Those are some of the babies that you were caring for yeah. who couldn't speak English. And you. <laughs> yes, actually, the five boys in the front here okay. are the five boys I looked after. For the first time, this this little guy, his name is Clever. How can they be rambunctious? They're so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it took me about three months to actually be able to hug one of these children and not be repulsed because oh. they have lice all over in their their hair. They're dirty. They stink, and and they're bratty. But so, but once I was there for a while, you know, I got lice and I, I started to be dirty because out there in the mud. What more can you do? Right. And and God just God just puts the love in your heart for for these little guys and it was amazing. So you saw to their heart. Yeah. Wow. And these little babies, the little girl in her arm has no leg from her knee down. Her name is Graciana. And um, her mom didn't want her. So Melissa adopted her and I was there when she took her first steps on her prosthesis. Oh. And it, she was Was she happy? Yeah. Was, oh. She was yeah. And then the little baby there, Charlie, he, he was going to be left at the hospital. And Melissa, Melissa found out about it. And she went and picked him up and brought him home. And I was there when she brought him home and we got to raise a little baby. What was baby. it like? It was, oh. It was neat. It was, it was just crazy, though, that the mom would just not want it. Just, yeah. This is a picture of the four girls in the back where the girls... The grade nine girls, I was their dean for the second year I was there. Okay. They helped me out in the kitchen and taught me a lot about, about being responsible, about God. and. Really? Yeah. I, they taught you about being responsible? Yeah, wow. because when you're in charge of, of making sure somebody else is responsible, okay. <laughs> you have to be responsible. <laughs> I'm, okay. We had some, some problems with demons coming into the dorm. And mm -hmm. that was one, one time my faith was tested because when you are young and don't know anything and somebody younger, younger who doesn't know anything comes to you for help against the devil, oh. there's nowhere else you can go to but God. Oh, and so you're talking about direct demonic attacks on where you can Where you can see visible things that the devil does. Mm -hmm. And it's it scary. It scared me really bad. So what, what is, as you're talking to the Lord, what is he telling you to do? How did you handle this? He, he sent me to some verses in the Bible in Romans 8, talking about what can separate us from the love of God. And it talks about not even demons can do that. Mm -hmm. And I shared that verse with them. I shared a whole bunch of verses. God would just send me verses in the Bible. And, and I would share it with them. Did I would pray with them. Did you know these verses were in the Bible? I didn't know. Wow. I, I had heard them before, but... 
to know where to find them? I didn't, I didn't apply it. I hadn't applied it to my life. But once I saw the word demon, I was just like, you know, God, God has control over the demons. And, and I had been face to face with demon. So it was just like, wow, it became real. Now, as, as you're dealing face to face with, you know, with, with you know, the, the supernatural, are you praying to the Lord? Are you talking to the Lord? Are you talking to this demon? I'm always talking to God. A, okay. Because a lot of people think that, you know, they're there to address, you no. know. No, you keep, you've got to keep your focus on God. Otherwise, as humans, we get distracted right. so easily. And, and the devil's stronger than us. But if we keep our eyes on God, he's stronger than the devil. So, Amen. so there's really no fear that we need to have. This is a, just a picture of, of how we travel over there. This is just a big truck, just like the big truck that I went on. Okay. My mom and my sister there and a bunch of kids from the oh, high school. Your mom came over? My mom came down the last year I was there for the last seven weeks and shared, shared part of our experience there. So wow. That was really special. This Ooh. is... Oh, oh. <laughs> This is one of the common spiders you find. I found, is that the, found this one in my room. Is that a part of the back of him? If you look really close, looks like those, a cactus. Are all, those are all baby spiders. If you look really close. <gasps> yeah, there's hundreds of baby spiders right there. That is really gross. <laughs> there's so many cool bugs and Cool and bugs? Like, yeah. God, God has so many amazing little creatures look, out there. And it has hair and the eyes. I mean, he has a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not always a pretty one. But no. <laughs> No, these, man, he just has so many creations. Oh. This was one of the little babies of, of a house family there. Oh, I'd want to bring that one home. <laughs> <laughs> she has a mom and a dad, so no. you can't. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> they named her, her Sada after me. Oh. And I'm excited to go back there and, and see her growing up a little bit and, and to see the other kids, see how much they've grown and, and to be able to, to share more time and, and more of what I've learned with them. And this is a picture of of me doing a massage at Wildwood. We're learning how to do health expos, how to share what we've been oh. learning with the public. So you've learned massage. I'm, I'm learning. Now, after the show, I need to test you, okay? <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, okay. That's it. And the next one? That's Is it. That, that's, that's the last that's one? That's the last one. Okay. So now I understand that within a f a f maybe a, f a couple of weeks, you're leaving us again. Yes. Where are you going? How did you... As part, of, as part of the course at Wildwood, uh, once we're done our six months of training, we have the test, <laughs> and that's to go on a mission trip. So Wait, are you, so you're serious. Okay, so you, you do your school at Wildwood, and then each graduate, are, you're commissioned. Yeah, to go on a, a one-month mission, mission trip where we go and teach an abbreviated course of what we've learned. And my little group is going to Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. Wow. Yeah, it, I've looked it up. It, it sounds pretty intense, but I'm excited because it sounds like they need, they need help. And, and I'm excited to go in and see how much I've actually learned so to be able to teach them. What all have you heard of or, you know, about the area that you're going into? Not much. <laughs> I've heard about child, child soldiers. Um, oh. There's a lot of of really bad men over there, especially with, with women. And I've yeah. heard... Is it like um, prostitution or...? Just a lot of rapes that go on. Okay, okay. And I've, learnt, I've heard that it's, it's really poor and there's not, there's not, much, um, not much food and not... It's just pretty So not much devastating. food where you're going? I don't know. Wow, you're just, you're just open. I know, I know God will provide for what we need. Amen. So. Now, did you have to come up with your own funds to go over? We, we fundraise during our course, so, so we've almost come up with enough money, but not quite yet. We're still $9,000 short, and we have, we have two weeks, but... 9000 God can do that. Yeah, yeah he so, can, if he so wants now, us to go. What are some of the plans that, you know, the Lord has laid on your heart to get this 9000 in two weeks? Well, um, we've, done, we've done pretty much what we can just as, as a class. I'm still baking cookies and selling cookies okay. until okay. until I leave. Kind of cookies, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're vegan. Oh, they're, they're healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you wall your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're a healthier. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, we we've been doing that. We've been doing health expos. We go to some churches for health emphasis weekends, and 
and just ask for donations and and it's been coming in slowly and slow slowly but mm -hmm. but surely so i'm just trusting that god's gonna impress on hearts that have heard and and he's gonna bring it in if he wants us to go okay now i know that you said you wanted to you know go back to bolivia so what are going to be you know your next steps after africa because africa. we know the lord is going to work that after Africa, I, I planned I'm going to be flying back here, and then as soon as I get back, I'm I'm going to fly as straight as I can to Bolivia, and go back to the orphanage. The school will be starting in February, and I'll probably be getting there a little late, but um, I plan to go back and and help with the education and wherever I'm needed. And yeah. do you have any thoughts of maybe starting a, a small lifestyle center in, a, in conjunction with the school or the orphanage? I would really like, I don't know about a lifestyle center that seems it's kind more of than I could, yeah, more than I could handle, but you know, I have, I have connections now and, and if I had a group of people who could help me, absolutely. And I, I want to start from, from the inside, from the kids, because I know that maybe someday extranjeros, um, foreigners won't be able to go into Bolivia because the visa or, or whatever happens, political stuff is always happening. Yes. And if we can get this stuff into the kids and get them trusting in God, I know that they can be amazing missionaries in their own country. Amen. And that's where I feel I need to start for now. So just now, if you could get an army of youth to go with you, I mean, what would some of the things you would you tell them to convince them to join you to go to leave their comforts of home? Mm -hmm. I think I would just say that that it doesn't matter what you do. There's only one one thing that is worth doing, and, and that's what God has called you to do. And I know for me, I didn't know who God was until I went to the mission field and saw him provide for me mm -hmm. and saw him look after me, protect me. And my faith is growing more and more each day as, as I trust in Him. And there's nothing better to do but that. And it's not really what I'm doing, but what God is doing in me as I work for Him. And I think that's it's the most rewarding thing Amen. I could ever do. If you could share <clears throat> one final experience through all of this as the Lord is wooing you and using you, what would that experience be? The most powerful thing that changed your life? <clears throat> throughout this process? Was it, you know, the demons? Was it the children? What was it? I think, I think it's just the way he protects me and looks after me. Not just protects me, but, you know, I heard a, a definition of grace, and it was talking about justice is not getting what you deserve. And, no, justice is getting what you deserve. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. And grace is getting what you don't deserve. And I see how God looks after me and, and does things for me that I don't deserve. For instance, when I was coming to the States, to Wildwood, I didn't, I didn't have enough money for, mm. for a plane ticket. But somebody gave me just enough money to, to get a bus ticket. It took me four days to get here by bus. And, and on the bus, they switched my bags onto a different bus. So I didn't have any clothes. And at Wildwood, they only wear skirts. I was in pants. And I got there with the clothes on me that I had and my guitar on my back, that was it. And I was just like, God, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm cold. I'm wearing pants in the middle of a place where that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was just feeling so bad. And, and you know, he provided for everything I needed. He gave me a dress. It was the most ugly black jumper, but you know what? It was it a dress. Was, it was a dress. And he gave me another skirt, so for two weeks I was... I was wearing those too, and it was so neat to wake up in the morning and, and, and not have to worry about what you're going to wear, right. because I knew exactly what I was going to wear with the other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it just, he just provides for you, and it's just amazing to, yeah. to me how much he cares. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your story. I mean, I'm almost in tears because the Sarah Ross story is each and every one of our stories. Mm -hmm. It's the story of a God of grace, of mercy, and a God of justice. And he's calling for each of us to have extreme faith for an extreme mission, which is to save the world. Let's accept that commission and that extreme mission. Thank you for joining us on Mission TV.